I am working on the all the good things. Um, there's not a whole lot of set um, out there or designs out there using this particular set. So I thought I would show you how to use uh, this uh, set using the all good good things and um, and it's kind of like an oriental because I am Chinese. Okay, and this is the um, card that we will be working on. Um, it's good fortune, success, prosperity, longevity. Uh, what's that say? I don't know. And ambition and courage. Okay, and I'll show you how to use this set along with the uh, blender pens. And so I've got all my cards that are cut up for this particular card. And you'll also need... Um, a uh, embossing buddy and a couple of your daubers and also your uh, cleaning chamois cloth right here okay so i'm gonna get started get this all set up for you you need the heat tool as well as the white embossing powder and um we'll get this started okay so you're gonna uh, all the measurements are going to be uh, laid out on my uh, blog www.liz.holloway.ca and I don't do a lot of posting on that particular site just because I do work full time now starting um, July and it's really hard for me to um, to blog teach and then as well as other uh, family matters okay and so I decided that um, you know I'm gonna blog whenever possible that I can okay so you're gonna start off with um, eight and uh, four and a quarter by 11 inch thick whisper white I'm gonna score this at five and a half and you're gonna fold this now when I talk about folding down this is your indentation score line so it's basically indented okay and then you're gonna fold this down and then you're gonna use your bone folder and taking your bone folder lining this up and then creasing it now I highly recommend using your bone folder because um, it will stop the uh, cardstock from crackling up. Okay, so then you're going to put this aside. And the next thing what I would like you to do is take the basic black, line it up onto your grid paper, and you're going to pounce your embossing buddy onto the basic black. And the reason why I'm using the embossing buddy is because um, you don't want any powder from sticking on where you don't want it to be okay so the next thing is I forgot to bring out my white craft pad and this is the white craft pad the whisper white the newer um, stamp set the white craft pad doesn't come inked I just found this out um, it's a plain white pad inside and then when you open it up um, it's uninked so you'll get a reinker with it and you just have to reink it all up so this is the old style um, ink pad that I have right here the newer style, like I said, is not ink, and you'll you'll have this um, the newer style ink pad. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to take my acrylic block, open up the all the good thing, and I'm using the larger um, koi. Okay, and so basically, when you're lining up your wordings, I recommend that um, that you have a grid. Okay, grid block, and uh, I'm taking my grid block and basically lining the word on my acrylic lines. And so I'm making sure that it's all lined up. Okay, so I'm pressing this down. With the new clear mount or uh, poly clear mount, um, I recommend pressing it onto your acrylic block to make sure that it sticks. Okay, and then here I'm lightly Adding ink, the white ink, onto my stamp, and then making sure that everywhere I'm trying to add a stamp or um, a white image, I'm going to make sure that it's nice and crisp and clean. Okay, so once that is done, then what I'm going to do is take this stamp and then quickly stamp onto my basic black. And what am I doing? <laughs> onto my basic black okay and then making sure that the acrylic line lines up with the bottom of the basic black and you can stamp it on 
and then leaving it for a couple of seconds to make sure that the white ink is um, inked on and then lifting it right up so you got this beautiful distinctive koi okay now to make it even more pronounced I like to add the white embossing powder and tap it off and you can see that I'm using a coffee filter and what the coffee filter does is that when you're collecting all your powder it can really go back into the canister as is and you're not going to have any more mess powder mess on your table maybe just a few but not by much okay so then what you're gonna do is take your heat tool and you want to heat this tool um, to set it at the second setting it's gonna be loud so what you want to do is to make sure that when you are heating it up, your powder is going to be melted completely. I'm going to heat this up, and I'll show you in a minute the difference between the uh, heated up and non-heated. Okay, so I stopped the heat gun. And you'll see, I think if, you, if I bring it up closer, you'll see that uh, this area here is heated up because it's shiny. And if you look at this part, it's still powdery. So if you are to touch it, the powder will eventually erase off. So that's not what I want to do. So what I want to do is I'm gonna heat this completely so that I can start coloring. You can see it changing white. I'm going to heat it up, continue to heat it to make sure that it's all heated and melted away. So, and what I recommend you do is just double check and it looks like that certain areas are not heated up. So I'm going to take my heat tool again and add heat to that particular spot. Okay, so then I'm going to take my, uh, this is where I need my glasses to see. I'm going to take my stamping blends and I am using the um, dark calypso and the light calypso. Let me see if I can find that. So the, and if you're looking at it, uh, there's an indication right here that says marker and it will say the, uh, the name of it. So this is the dark calypso, uh, calypso coral. And I'm trying to look for, no, that's cherry cobbler. Okay, so anyways, I can't locate that. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, cherry co light cherry cobbler and the dark calypso coral. And so basically, I'm going to take my stamping blends. And if you are not familiar with the stamping blends, we have a indicator where it says to use a brush or here to use it as a marker. Okay, so then you're going to take your, um, your markers and you're going to lightly touch the white areas and if it goes right onto the big on the black don't worry about that because it's the black is not going to show and so you're going to just color this in and so because I don't have the uh, light color I'm going to take my white blending pen okay and then basically going to pull this out so that it's got the that two-tone shade and then if you need to add more, go ahead and add a little bit more onto here. Okay, and then this area here, I'm going to shade him, well his body, I'm going to shade it a little bit darker. It's red. Okay. And marking it right on. Now I'll answer most of your questions at the end of the uh, video uh, because I am recording this um, for my 
my uh, other site and it will be you know um, adjusted or uh, edited with the videos I'm gonna just color that in and if you're inter um if you don't understand the coloring of the koi um, I basically looked up the picture uh, of koi's and how I marked um, the coloring so there's no um, rhyme or reason as to how to color it okay so then here I'm taking the darker color and applying darker color right on top of the the koi okay and then here down at the bottom I'm gonna use the darker darker what is this? Uh, this is the light cherry cobbler. I'm gonna place this with the dark calypso coral, and I'm gonna mix the two together by creating a flicking motion, pulling the uh, the light the light cherry cobbler out, and it gives you that kind of like orangey color. You see that? Okay. And then if I want more orange here, I'm gonna use a flicker motion and pulling the light cherry cobbler mixing in with the dark calypso coral okay and then here I'm gonna pull in another red I apologize if I'm not getting the colors right uh, again it's uh, everything's all new to me and I haven't um, stamped in a while other than uh, the Facebook Live on my client's team. Okay, so then here is that. Oops. I'm going to pull this with the dark calypso and pull it. Just giving it a kind of like a feather motion. Okay. And then if you want it even lighter, take your blend and blend it up. Okay, and then here I'm going to take darken up the head and right onto the, the white taking my calypso coral and again using the feather motion onto there okay so then that's that and the, the great part about the stamping blends is because it's um, it's easy to blend you can mix the two different or even more colors if you like here I'm gonna take that and then again blending it in with my <laughs> losing strap with my calypso coral okay so that is that for that particular koi and I'm gonna Cap, recap everything okay so how I created this dark spot is to take my basic black ink and I have a dauber and so this is my dauber um, uh, lineup uh, thing my positioner and so basically I'm taking my dauber in onto the finger and daubing it lightly onto the koi to create that effect isn't that awesome? And then so then if I want uh, this to lighten up a little bit, I'm going to darken up this fins. And you get that effect. Love it? Okay. So here, I'm going to put this back onto my display. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention is that with the, uh, the white embossing powder, you can also take your blends and color the words as is and even if it's on black you don't have to worry about it because it's uh, black and it won't show through okay, if you show through the white or if you stamp it on white then it will show through okay so there is my my word highlight it with the blends and then I'm gonna take my poppy parade cardstock and then add it right onto as my mat and I like to use glue because glue goes a long way versus the tape you only need a very small thin amount for this glue and then here to make sure that the three sides are even you've got the left uh, the bottom the left and the top and as long as those all three sides are even 
and you can place it and you know that the bottom is even. And then with the glue, if you know that um, it's going to give you some wiggle room and so you can move it or maneuver it to wherever you want. Okay, and so there is that. And then taking your basic white cardstock and this is the the base card. Oops. And then I need my my glue. And then adding the glue right here. And then all the measurements will be on my blog and I will add this on just in a few minutes after we finish this. And so then taking my base card, lining it onto the grid, and as long as the three sides or the four sides are all equal, then you can go ahead and place it onto your base card. So this is how you can color your, your all the good things koi. And I'll show you uh, what I have done with the other ones. And this is only gonna be a few, um, um, only be a half an hour Facebook Live because that's all I have time for is uh, usually half hour. And so here are my cards using the same technique. And this time I added uh, blue to the koi as well as the black. Okay, and then using that same technique, adding it, the color onto the, um, the wording here. And then here is my other co uh, card is a bonsai tree and this one I added cherries right on here or little uh, berries onto the tree to look at, make it look like an, a mini bonsai apple tree. So that is all the tips and tricks I have for you um, uh, and I'm glad that you are here to um, watch me live and like I said I'm going to try to uh, make this live every two weeks and that, um, and hopefully that the streaming will uh, come to you and then I'll be posting it as I go um, onto the events page. So thank you so much and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. If you have any questions, I can be reached at liz.hallway at gmail.com or visit my blog www.lizhallwaydesign.ca and the following Facebook pages, Liz Holloway Design or the Paper Fanatics.